This is the Selenko Whiteout 18x20, but it's not just any Selenko Whiteout 18x20, it's my Selenko Whiteout 18x20, and I absolutely love it. So I've been playing with the Whiteout as my racket of choice for several weeks now, and during that time I've played a few tournaments, I've worked on my forehand, and experimented with a few different string setups. So in today's video, I'll explain why I love the Slinko Whiteout so much for my game. We'll talk to one of the main engineers behind the Slinko Whiteout's development. Oh, hey, we can make it. Hey, how's it going? And thank Direct Tennis for sponsoring this video. Direct Tennis is an app available for Android and iOS that links players with local stringers. If you need some new strings in your racket and you want to make sure that you take them somewhere you can trust, Direct Tennis can help you connect with trusted stringers in your areas. You can see what kind of strings they have in stock, what kind of ratings they've got, and how far they are away from your actual location. And if you're a stringer looking to expand your customer base, Direct Tennis is the perfect solution to get more rackets in and out the door to keep you rolling in those dollar dollar bills. If you'd like to support Tencom, please consider checking out the links in the description below where you can download Direct Tennis or even just check out their website to start. Yeah, I mean, it's the extension of the arm, essentially, and your hand. So from that standpoint, I think, um, the question is always you gotta ask yourself is your racket and your mind gonna be aligned at 5 all in the third set at 30 all? Can you hit it on, into the corner? From my very first hit with the 18 by 20 whiteout, I felt something truly special. It's very rare to find a racket that combines great spin potential with a lower launch angle. A key factor which really drove my dedication to my previous racket, the Head Extreme Tour, and even older still, the V Core 95. And what my Extreme Tour really lacks, especially in stock form, is is decent stability. The problem is maneuverability and stability just they don't mix very well. True stability comes from mass and the more mass you have the more stable of an experience you'll get but the more mass you have to deal with the slower that racket is going to swing and the whiteout just strikes a perfect balance for my tennis. It's maneuverable enough for me to maintain high racket head speeds on my forehand, giving me the access to spin I need to hit those heavy, consistent rally balls. The launch angle is controlled enough to give me the confidence I also need to flatten out those aggressive balls and really close down the net like the all-court player that I really wish I was. But as someone who reviews rackets all the time, I struggle to understand why I felt so connected to the 18x20 wideout. The specs don't quite line up with what I'm used to. The twist rate's a bit higher than what I like. I've never even tried a Slinko racket before, and I've never actually used an 18x20 racket as my racket of choice. But the Slinko wideout, just for me, it possesses an X factor on court. And I wonder if there's something maybe hidden deep within the engineering of this frame. We are working with personally with, you know, with Solinko actually on kind of redoing, redesigning their rackets and the product is already out there and they are putting it into the players hands. I've heard some good things about those rackets. I hope so. I hope them design it. So if you haven't heard of him, Roman Prokes is a true mastermind when it comes to tennis equipment. He's the man who stood behind Andre Agassi throughout his career as his primary stringer and customizer. And more famously, he's the man behind one of the most important developments in Novak Djokovic's career, which is that racket change back in 2018. So to learn more about Roman's involvement in the development of the whiteout, Slinko actually offered me the rare opportunity to speak directly to one of the lead engineers on the whiteout project. The goal of the whiteout is to well, first to appease the the better players, yeah. the harder hitting players. And so those are uh, what we set out to do first. And that wide out, we don't want a lot of uh, power in the racket. So at first the racket was too powerful. We had to, uh, you know, take a step back. And that's where layup uh, comes into uh, change of the, uh, and by changing that, we were able to increase the audience size that prefers the, uh, the new design versus the old design. And that's the process you have to do. You want to get that pool player to be majority uh, what you are uh, uh, liking what you're trying to do. So Roman um, uh, 
help me get the comments, help me understand the comments, help me uh, uh, understand what I need to do to make that racket to a piece to a larger audience. So one of the major strengths that I felt with the Whiteout, especially when compared with my Head Extreme Tour, was how much better it felt on off-center contact. There's a lot more power, there's a lot more spin outside the sweet spot, especially considering how thin that beam is. And this really helps the Whiteout perform extremely well on volleys, returns, and I've absolutely been loving it on my two-handed backhand. See, usually the best way to add torsional stability to a racket, and that torsional stability is really what defines a large sweet spot, is to add weight at three and nine o'clock. That was nice. And so the twist weight on my whiteouts do come in like a full point higher than my extreme tours at around 13 and a half. But the other contributing factor to that torsional stability is torsional rigidity, or how stiff a racket feels in resisting to twisting. For this, Selenko implemented 40T carbon at the three and nine o'clock positions on the racket. Now 40T carbon, it's not just some like BS marketing term, it's an industrial term. It stands for 40 tons of tensile strength, which is nearly double the strength of the carbon typically found in tennis rackets. The typical fiber used in the uh, tennis, uh, sporting goods fibers are about 20, 20 ton, 20, between 20 and 25, maybe 23 max. 40 ton fiber is actually, the one, the one we use is uh, actually higher uh, than 40 ton, but just for the lack of, uh, you know, just the uh, uh, terminology, uh, basically people just say it's a 40 ton material. The tonnage means it's the tensile strength of the fiber. When the tonnage goes up, also the uh, stiff uh, modulus goes up, meaning the, uh, the stiffness goes up. So the 40 ton fiber is actually stiffer than the uh, your uh, regular uh, 20 ton uh, fibers. The higher tonnage of fiber, the fiber is also finer. So just like anything, you can say as a pure, more pure, but it's not necessarily, you, but you can use the purity in this way. It's just finer. So the last thing that I prefer about the whiteout when compared to my old extreme is the feel. As is typical with the extreme line, there's a little bit of a hollowness to the response. Similar to my Erx with the old Radical MP, the sound on contact is also pretty high pitched, which I don't really like. It's a little bit too bad mintini now that I'm used to my whiteouts. The dwell time is also longer, but somehow they preserved all of the feel you could ever ask for. It's not muted and soulless like a Bablet Pure Strike. It's not dead feel feeling like some E-Zone 98s can be, and it's not overly plush like the Gravity series. It's responsive and pure feeling in the same way that my old V-Core 95 was. And I've really been missing that in my tennis experience. And then how about the foam filling? Cause like when I'm reading the tennis warehouse forums and stuff, people really get excited about foam filling, like it has yes. some sort of magic. Foam filling is actually <laughs> A, well, I mean, some work, some some people like it, some people do, uh, don't, but every racket has a chamber. And uh, the bigger the chamber, it creates a different uh, frequencies of sound. So for better players, they don't want that hollow feel. So you want to add the uh, foam into the rackets to, to kind of quiet down that chamber. But there's so many type of foam in there and we have to, um, find the right mix also, uh, uh, the right density, the right, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, performance of the foam so that it optimizes what we're trying to get. So when I put all of these pieces together, I kind of start to understand why I feel so connected to this racket. There were specific engineering decisions made that just happened to work perfectly for my game. Now, obviously, Slinko isn't out there trying to engineer the perfect racket for 10 comp. I wish maybe one day that will happen. But the work that they've done really addresses all of the concerns I had with my previous racket. There's more power and spin and stability outside the sweet spot, as well as a longer dwell time with a little bit more of a solid feel. Yet somehow they've managed not to sacrifice any of the things that I find most important on court. The whiteout whips through the air as fast as some of the most maneuverable rackets out there, and that 18 by 20 offers all the control 
I could ever ask for. The funny thing is, if you go even deeper, it becomes less surprising as to why I would actually like this racket. So while Andre Agassi's career came to a close around the same time that I picked up my first racket, which happened to be a head Agassi 23, he's been a huge influence on my life in tennis. This is because like Agassi, I learned tennis from my father. While my dad was first inspired to take up tennis by Arthur Ashe, he played his best tennis in the late 90s and early 2000s, a time where Andre Agassi was at his peak and I was still shitting my pants and diapers. But since my dad's play style was more similar to Andre's than Pete's, you can guess who he cheered for and who inspired him on court. Because of this, I always remember my dad using an oversized extra length tennis racket similar to Agassi's Radical OS. And Andre was always so specific with his tennis equipment, but it, it didn't feel like that diligence was born of superstition, but rather it felt motivated by competition. And my dad was always similarly obsessive with his tennis equipment as well. It's a trait that spread just basically across all his other interests from cars to writing books and stuff. So when it came time to teach me how to play tennis, the importance of keeping one's rackets in good order was passed on to me. But by the time I had played my first tournament, Agassi had retired and it had become clear that Federer and Nadal had changed the game for good. So even though I always cheered for Rafa and my dad was an early Fed fan, he coached me to model my forehand after Djokovic. Now Djokovic's humble workhorse of a forehand stood in very stark contrast to the heavily stylized strokes of the other goats. A simple compact forehand stroke that simply wouldn't crack under pressure. And this was something anybody could copy and you can still see hints of this in my forehand today. I've got a short compact take back and a bent elbow on contact. But of course, Djokovic has one of the best forehands in the world, if not the best. And my forehand isn't even in the top 10 in my city, so it's not that comparable. So the reason I've gone so far back here is because like Agassi, I believe that tennis replicates life. Every decision you've made, every experience you've had, every class you've taken and job you've worked, all of that accumulates to inform the decision you're about to make. And one of the most important decisions we can make as tennis players is the racket we choose. So after nearly a year of searching and over 100 different rackets tried in the last five years, I finally feel like I've got a racket that acts as an extension of my arm. Now it's important to say that I don't think the whiteout is the absolute best racket on the market. That would be total BS. For example, I think the Radical NP offers a better combination of stability and power for its weight class. I think the Pro Staff X is more comfortable and stable in stock form due to that higher static weight, yet despite that extra weight, it's more forgiving to use. And the V-Core 95 definitely feels faster through the air without giving up much punch or control. But all of these rackets lack one big thing, and that's feel. So many rackets out there today feel overly muted. They feel artificially plush and slightly disconnected, like they're hiding something. And while these rackets can hit a hugely devastating ball, to me, there's something a little bit off-putting about them. It's kind of like AI generated art. There's something initially stunning about the pieces with amazing detail and those vibrant colors, but the longer you look, the less interesting they become. The lack of emotion, of soul, of humanity, it becomes disappointingly obvious. And if you've ever hit with a pre-graphene head racket, a real 6195, or even some of these older bow blasts, you'll know exactly what I mean. There's a purity to the feel. You know exactly what's happening on the string bed when that ball makes contact. You know where that ball lands on the string bed. You know exactly how much spin it had and how much you'll be able to apply. You know exactly what you're gonna need to do on that next shot. Hit bigger, tip cleaner, tip better. And that's what the Slinko Whiteout does for me. It keeps me chasing that next ball. 
I want nothing more than to feel that clean contact of a well-struck shot. And knowing how much went into the development of the whiteout just takes it to another level for me. And I'm not saying that there's some sort of intrinsic link between Roman Prox and I or me with Selenko. That would be absolutely crazy, but just for fun, check out what he had to say about the best new racket available in 2020. The hottest one right now at this moment is probably, it just came out, it's actually Head Extreme Tour. What I am saying is that understanding where you come from is a key part in finding where you're going to go next. Our tennis games are built on the backs of our coaches and our idols. So for me, that means Andre, that means Novak, and to me, most importantly, that means my dad. Now, since I spend like almost all my time working with and thinking about tennis rackets, maybe that means Roman Prokes too. So now that I'm able to trace a sort of like family history back from the racket I'm using today all the way to the rackets my dad used in his prime, along with the men who inspired him on court, I feel this extra level of connection to my tennis rackets. So the more I've been thinking about it, the more I've come to realize the right racket is more than just a chunk of graphite with some plastic bits. The right racket becomes a time capsule, an object that has joined you for all of your wins and all of your losses. Your racket is there for you, whether you're smoking winners or throwing your racket down to the ground in frustration. You see, I used to sell my old rackets when I was done with them, but I'll never do that again. Picking up my old sticks reminds me of how I used to play. I remember my best wins with that racket. I remember my worst losses with that racket. I remember my life in tennis, the friends I've made, the opponents I've played, and the teammates who never strayed. So thank you. Thank you to the YouTube members for making this video happen. Thank you to Selenko for all the tech support and supplying the rackets for this review. Thank you to Direct Tennis for sponsoring this video. And most importantly, thank you to you, the viewers. Whether this is your first time watching Tencom or your 94th time, because this is our 94th video, which is kind of crazy, get close to 100. Thank you for all your support, your likes, your dislikes, your hate comments, your super thanks. I can't believe some of your generosity and most importantly, your time. Of course, you know I wouldn't be here without you, so thanks so much for watching. We've got a lot of exciting projects coming up, so I'll be posting a little bit less than I have been over the last couple months, but I promise the best is yet to come.